there's definitely a lot of pool left to play. We are early on day one. Jason Shaw did this earlier, Jeremy, when Carl and I were working together. And you, f you feel like he's trying to figure out exactly where he needs to hit the one. He did have good success with it. Yeah, they broke nice. He's going to get kissed to the top rail with the cue ball. Kind of still inspecting the racking area as he walks and changes cues. Probably a safety here on the one to open. Does have maybe a kiss shot on the seven if he wants it. It's not that bad, actually. No, it's not. Carries a position, too, if he likes it. Obviously, it's something you have to be at the table to play. But it looks good to us. Yeah, if he plays a safety, probably just a thin side of the one dropping the cue ball in the bottom cushion behind the five and six. Okay. Yeah, that graphic was correct. Feliciano did win that match five to four. Versus Al Katie. That's right. like to come behind this one and hold the cue ball. You can get a lot of distance and separation. Oh, and he's hit it real thin, Jeremy. Well, the, that first rail slides. That's a common kick miss to where the first rail takes a lot of that English, but then the second rail doesn't take much of the left at all, which he had just straight high, it looked like. Hardly any left. Yeah, it looked like straight high. That's why I figured he'd aim a little higher. I mean, these guys do play on the new cloth quite a bit. Uh, but you made a great point there, which I really like. The first rail lengthens up, and the second rail shortens up. Yeah, it and just doesn't open up with any spin at all, really. Most common kick you'll see missed in the Moscone and many of the events with the brand-new felt. Yeah, he's a little steeper than he'd like. He could play. This two different ways, Jeremy. He could just roll forward and play the purple five in the lower right, which I think he'll do as long as this isn't too steep. Or he could draw down for the purple five in the right middle. That's a little dangerous as well. Yeah, Jason, though, who possesses one of the best, you know, kind of touch in the game, really. You can see him kind of messing with the backhand a little bit, bandaged up, took a burn on his hand not long ago, and... He gave me a little glance at it this morning. Huh? It looks like I'm sure it's on the way to healing, but pretty nasty little injury. It's a good thing it's on the backhand, right, not the front one. Oh, amen to that. I feel like he will uh, get to a position or a place in his mind soon where that just kind of goes away. Yeah, it's amazing what adrenaline will do. Just like if you've ever played, you know, I played some of my best pool being a little under the weather, you know, not, not like flu sick or anything like that, but definitely not feeling my best. And maybe your your mind tends to concentrate a little more, and again, when the adrenaline gets going, uh, things become a little more normal. And now for his first nine of the event, I believe he lost 5-0 to Zelensky in his first match. It's absolutely correct. And the crowd loves it. So a break. Pretty efficient safety. Unexpected ball in hand. And now Mario He to break in game number two. Alcade over on the second table. Potting the nine. solid he's gonna get a little look at the two i think i don't think the eight really 
impeded overall. I don't think it's going to be a pocketable two ball, but that's how you want to break them right there. If you have the harder break, I think I wouldn't say it's totally an advantage, but I think you do need it. Sometimes the tables change the way they're breaking, and you being, being able to change along with it I think is a bonus. Yeah, and that cue ball coming one rail full into the nine was really nice as well. And, you know, I don't know which one taught the other, and he may have leaked a little more, but Albin and Mario are so good at controlling the speed of the object ball where it agrees with the speed of the cue ball. Now he's going to get put behind the five and eight here. This ball did leak away a little bit. Ooh, ooh, watch out. Watch out. No love in the home pool room, Jeremy. Well, day one, maybe he's got to. He's got to do a few things to earn it. Wow, that was treacherous there. Yeah, he hit a perfect safety and it trickled in off the nine. Yeah, hit, hit'll go a long ways here, of course. Don't want to give a ball in hand ever, but with the five eight tied up somewhat, you don't want to give Mario any better plan at getting at those balls, right? So. Yeah, and that wasn't terrible. Highly aware of how the table lengthens out with that high cue ball. Played it really short. Cue ball did lengthen out. Caught the top side of the three. Mario's got some work to do. Oh, and he's overcooked that. Cut it a little too much. Just seems a bit uncomfortable. Jason would like to get to a position here where he can go towards the purple five off the pink four. I was about to say the only way I can really see is from the short side of the four. Nothing else really offered much to get at the at the five eight. You know, let's say with anything predictable. Now he's going to play for the safety, I think, off the five. Shove this two rails. Oh, he's just gonna follow two rails, trying to get to where he can bang the five around and really use the eight. Yeah, you just gotta be careful here. This ball will lengthen. This is more about the cue ball. I like to stun right in there behind the eight. Yeah, I don't know. I might, I might stun to the end rail here and let the full five come a little tighter. Oh, he played it with speed. Really nice. Well, it did lengthen out. Needs it to settle. Mario might be able to get a piece of this, Jeremy, and if not, he can with the short cue. Well, that's kind of what I meant. You know, a lot of times you'll have the feel of stunning forward and still look, getting the snooker behind the eight, but also be able to put the five in a better position on the back rail if you cut it a little bit more. It's yeah, you, you can afford to hit it with more speed. Right. Uh, this may scratch. No. It's going to hold nicely. Something we haven't seen a ton of, a bunch of tactical kind of safeties. and Play a soft kick, it looks like, Let, letting the ref know the foot five is not on the cushion. Well, look at that ball lengthen out. If that gives you any idea of how new this cloth is. Nothing but the best for these players. And by day two or three, that ball will play a little differently. Mario, he looking to keep the purple five there and possibly use the green six and nine as cover. Yeah, I'd like to get that separation. Yeah, and speed was kind of key there, right, Jeremy? If you keep that cue ball on the right long rail, it's going to be a lot tougher to get to this five ball. Yeah, I think the concern was always going to be the six getting tied up with the nine as well. So now Jason has a little bit, you might say, a little room. Oh, he's going to get a rail. Not terrible. No, I agree, not terrible. It's going to be hard. If he wants to shoot through the five and use the nine, I believe the five is going to kiss the nine. So how do you get the cue ball out of there? Man, I don't know. 
You might just roll up on this, huh, Jeremy? Maybe. Maybe. Mm. It's okay. It's just one of those unique situations you don't see come up very often. You can't let the cue ball escape. And Pretty smart there as well, keeping it simple. I think Mario can chip this, though, going rail first and send the cue ball down towards the eight. He's going to have the six there to hold the five. I think he'll play it light. I think he'll shoot the same shot, but just play it lightly. Yeah. I think just I think he can still get the snooker. He's going to come down, though, right? Yeah, towards the eight. He just didn't. Well, I oh, think no, it turned okay. out well. Yeah, very good. I like that better. These great players typically, if Shaw cannot see the purple five, will go two rails to this ball, to the top short rail and the right long rail. I love it when they can see this shot, though, trying to run the cue ball off the left side. Oh, no, he could see the entire ball. That was misleading. Looked to me like he was almost completely hooked until he got down on the ball. Shaw caught that pretty thick. You've got to wonder how much of it he could actually see with the way he shot it. Pretty handy here on the six. Should just hold a little stop shot. Doesn't really want to entertain the nine there, or bring the nine into play, so. You know, coming off a loss, you know, both players, you got to like Mario a little bit in this match just because even though he, he came off his loss, he just came off the table. And it was a 5-4 loss, so made a little comeback in that match. Probably feeling pretty okay to get right back out there. Where Jason, he's got to keep his, you know, concentration a little different than everyone else this week. As a room owner, you got to suspect even though he's got all the help in the world, just naturally, he's always going to be a little bit conscious of what's going on in his, in his business. So, one apiece. Shaw to break in game three. scoring all you need to do is go to wntlivescores.com Kissed off the bottom of the nine, quite unfortunate. Actually hit the balls quite well. The one didn't drop, obviously. Like Jeremy said, the one nine is looming. Yeah, and I mean, he could clear the table and it's definitely runnable, but it's a pretty easy combination for these players, ball in hand. He won't fire it, but he won't baby it, just somewhere right in the middle. Another look at that combination. Two to one is our score. We'll be back shortly for more of the PLP. Ladies 
and gentlemen, we're back. It's the 2024 Premier League pool coming to you from US1 Billiards in West Haven, Connecticut. Jason and R. Shaw's pool room. Yeah, David, table two is Coping Knee and David Alcady. I think it's Coping Knee's first match. David Alcady has already played one and lost one against Michael Feliciano. That table two will be going on constantly, and you can view it at the Matchroom Pool live YouTube channel. And back to the main table. With Mario Villa, 2-1 lead over Jason Shaw. I'm Jeremy Jones, joined by Scott Frost, the freezer. Mario broke him really well in, the, in his first break. Didn't get everything out of it as far as a shot, but he's not backing off much. You'll see that quite often also with the players that break a little firmer, the ones that have that break, where they do miss the one and has a chance to go one rail up in the corner. Yeah, and he's gotten a nice kiss or a nice rub on the two to dress up. The three nine combination is possible. I think he's heavy enough on the two to hold. I think, anyways. And the three nines, you know, if you're in position, not that difficult. But uh, from here, you'd like to just hold position on the three for the run. Oh yeah, but it was close. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh, he's gotten it dead in the corner, or lined up enough to where it is makeable. Just a matter of what he can do with the cue ball. Are they frozen? I think he can shoot away from it okay, though, and still throw the ball directly where he wants, which would be shooting it a little, the cue ball, towards this long rail. Scratching his head, saying, what do I have to do? I love Mario. He just always makes me laugh. He's a great guy, such a lighthearted guy, and one of my favorite players. Absolutely love his stroke. Now, is he thinning this for safety? I think he's trying to make it. Oh, he's thinning it for safety. Pretty clever. Didn't bite off that second rail. Yeah, and knowing he had the cover on the nine with the three, so didn't figure Jason to take on that combination from this far away. A little awkward. I tell you, it's a little, little, little funny. Is he going simply behind the nine here? I think it's oh, too going. tough to hold. Yeah. yeah, I like that. See how he kind of softly stunned that a little as well? He's great at that shot. Yeah, all those ones that aren't so standard kind of reminds me of like a Rodney Morris back in the day would play safety somewhat like everyone else sees them, but add their little touch of talent with their with the strike of the cue ball. Like a lot of players there, you're just rolling to the back rail to the in rail, and if you get the snooker, you're happy, but you're really just kind of guarding on all bases. All right, the deflection got him again there. Yeah, and that's a shot, the shot that Mario just shot. It's its like Jeremy said, the deflection. You use that extreme inside or outside English, and it's hard to get it to turn back in time. He wanted to get deep behind that three. Instead, caught it thin coming out. Shaw going to have an opportunity to tie this match up. And he's got to make a nice one here. He's stunning this. Oh, he's... Didn't really get the draw on the ball he wanted either. I thought he would just lay up by the side pocket there and take the cut on the four. Same here, Jeremy. He looked, he did look quick. If you take another look at this, and I just, I, I think the decision is what got him more than anything. I, I think that's a hanger for him to hold over there, cut the four, and go up and down for the five. All right, Mario usually very good at coming off the ball, like coming a couple rails behind the five here. Yeah, and he's proven that once again. Look at the speed. All right, may go one rail at this. Referee, referee needs to be right on top of this hit. Could actually hit this and fluke the four in. I believe it's a bad hit, Jeremy. Yeah, odds are it was that difficult.
Yeah, so we could go back to that decision by Shaw where he could have just held above the side pocket and taken the cut on the three, and that's something he typically would do, being such a shot maker. Well, it's just not that time of the year for, for Shaw yet. Yeah, he right. usually has his struggles earlier in the year, but once it starts to get late summer, early fall, things yeah. seem to change. No kidding. Every year it seems that way. It's pretty incredible. Just a touch of low right here. Everything pretty self-explanatory. One thing Shaw's not going to like is trailing three games to one. Shaw get to break the balls in game number five, but what an important break it'll be. I believe so, anyways. Yeah, that's correct. Mario broke this rack. You know, I know it's early, but you really don't want to go 0-2 to start the day, especially if you're Jason Shaw. Now back over to table two, Coping Ni and David Alcady. Coping Ni was thinking about him just a moment ago after you know our, our break. We got to see, of course, I love to see all the highlights from last year, but him our Whirlpool Masters champion. And you just kind of wonder the motivation with how much noise his brother made towards the end of the year last year. And of course that US Open title, how motivated and what we might see from him in 2024. Yeah, it's all, it's been all co, little co the last year. Right. Okay, he switched sides, Jeremy. He He's sure had did. had success there. It's pretty flat on this too, but he can come back and forth. I think he can get between the eight and nine with a little check side on the cue ball. Yeah, speed's crucial though because where the four's at. So, I mean, he can't just take anything on this three and expect to get to that four ball. Yeah, and he's overrun it, and it's yeah. real easy for this cue ball to kill. So he's got to go through this softer I'd versus real hard. I think I'd bank it. He's going to warp it. Okay, got a lot. Tried to play off the eight. Well, the backhand looked pretty good there. Don't see much trouble here. Wants a little angle on the six. Be good. Out towards the center. Watch the nine. All ball fouls. I like the way he played that as well. angle where he can has a choice to draw it or he can kill it he can go forward three rails three twos are a score Ojeda breaking game number six, trying to get to the heel. David Alcady trying to tie the match. A little bit of a shot on the nine. A little short with position, but just got to steady himself.
got to wonder what's going through Jason Shaw's mind. I know he's really good at staying focused, blocking things out, but we've mentioned it numerous times. He's in his home room. He is the owner. And there are a lot of people that work for him, so I wonder if he can keep that out of his mind throughout the remainder of this event. Yeah, a great opening break that didn't you know, yield much results or benefit, really. And then the last two have been a little more of a struggle. Did make a ball in the break in the last, the one in the corner, missed the one in the side there. So one of the best things we all like to see is the long ball from Jason Shaw. And not really, no matter how tough it is, it's just how clean he hits it. That's the, really the treat in watching. Yeah, he hits those so clean. Really nice to control as well. Seven ball could be a little bit of a problem, but the six does lead to it. Does it pass to the top right? Doesn't look like it, Jeremy. Does he nudge something here? I wouldn't, but he it did. worked out. Yeah, and that's all feel for these guys at the table. I was just looking the five near the six. I figured maybe one rail off the six into some type of opening on the seven nine, but he was feeling good about where he was at. And he kind of played it to where if I missed the seven, it wasn't that big a deal, but I wasn't ever going to hit the seven heavy. It was always going to be just a little chip on the seven. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree. I like the way he played it. What you said is true, right? He, his risk was very, very limited. And if he doesn't get there, he could have got there from the six. Yeah. So after trailing 3-1, it looks like a couple little things that uh, I wouldn't say definitely needed, but didn't hurt to get Jason Shaw back in this race to five. He looks like he's starting to flow as well. Yeah, and it's kind of like you can't really consider the flow to be in the match itself. You kind of got to get it for the entire event in these races to five. We're three apiece. We'll be back shortly with the remainder of this match. Jeremy Jones, joined by Scott Frost. We're here at day one of the 2024 Premier League pool. Brought to you from this man's pool room right here, Jason Shaw, US1 Billiards, West Haven, Connecticut. It's three apiece, their second match for each player, both with an opening loss. So, you know, somewhat of a crucial kind of, kind of couple games here, you know. Get, get something on the win column for one of these players. Uh, Jason, I love it when he actually puts a little more into the break. I think that's when he has his best results. Two goes off to six. I would maybe draw this off and shoot the two off to six here. Uh, he's going to chip it. If he can chip it and draw over, that's fine. But I think it's a little tighter into that side than maybe we, we suspect or maybe he suspects. I think he's worried if he plays it off the six, where's the six going? But I don't think you can concern yourself with that so much. I think he may have to try and draw back to the end rail, that being the top cushion back down, if he plays it off the six. Now, if he can play it cleanly, that's the shot. He can just slide over. Yeah, a little concern going into those narrow side pockets. They are small as well, right? But this is his first opportunity to really take the lead throughout the entire day. Yeah, and he put a little more into that break, which I think Jason, he developed a little firmer break. I see it at the Moscone sometimes when they're breaking a little different. During Hanoi last year at times, that big win he had, uh, like I said, during that time of the year, he seems to really thrive, but he really had the firm break at times. And I think it's something you gotta you gotta try to develop. Like I said, sometimes the the, the cut break with the s little lighter one 
not necessarily soft, but lighter one. Sure. Just isn't getting it done for one reason or another. And now chip in nine to get to the hill first. I just get the feeling, Jeremy, that he wants to perform this week. I had a little talk with him off to the side earlier today. and He is focused. He's working out daily. Lost a lot of weight since the cup. Yeah, that's the first thing I said to him. Uh, prior to the cup, he had started working on that. and You could see it and then definitely see even more now, just a few months later. Jason, a very strong-minded man when he you know, puts his mind on something. It's just a man that does a lot, so it's hard to have that focus on one thing. Yeah, whereas for a long time, he had nothing to focus on but pool. Now it's the complete opposite. Doing yeah. a fine job, right, Jeremy? The Hanoi Open, what a victory it was for him. Really propelled him. Sent him straight to the Moscone Cup. And I think it was uh, probably a very comforting thing to see, even though you got to believe he was going to get picked. But, but it would be nice if knowing that Jason you know, earns those points to make the team. That's the Jason Shaw you really want there. Now Mario He to try and tie this match at four and survive in the second round match. Uh, he's had nothing but dry breaks. Well, the eight went in. He's going to get a little piece of the one, possibly. Yeah, I think he's going to be covered up. Oh, totally covered up. He's got a little protection with the four six. And what I mean by protection, anytime you have to push out at any level, you have to consider yourself behind. You know, like, you know, not a favorite to win the game. If you just, uh, you know, did the simple math on it and long-term kind of th thinking. But so, you know, having a difficult situation like the 4-6 and having to push out does favor Mario. Yeah, definitely. Most definitely. It's a, it's a favor to him that the 4-6 are tied. He's probably going to go to the upper left side of the table somewhere, but I think he wants to find... Something near the rail. Tough to do when you're lagging to a bare rail like this. I'll tell you what, day one, usually the tables have to settle in. Of course, World Nine Bowl Tour people always doing things after each session to make sure the tables are at their best. But what I saw right there on that push uh, looked pretty straight, the table so far. Sure did, and Shaw eyeing down the 1-9 combination. The reason he's doing that, he could possibly make the 1 in the lower left if he can get enough of the 9. And the 4-6, as Jeremy pointed out, are tied up, so he's kind of free-rolling. I know you can't really say that against a player like Mario He, but it might be worth a shot. Otherwise, what's he do? Overcut this and run the cue ball? Yeah, I like that shot. Definitely a higher percentage. And that's where not getting a cue ball on the rail really made a difference. He was able to cue downward, not necessarily drawing the ball, but create a little bit of a bounce effect off the one. Cue with some right spin to kill the cue ball. And talking about the rollout of Mario He, maybe if he used the left long rail to the left of the purple five, it might have slowed the cue ball down a little better to get to the top rail. Now he's kicking at the one. Big time scratch possibility. Oh, might just kick it in as well. Touche, as they say. Very, very, very smooth. He goes through the cue ball so well. Cue finishes six to eight inches out every single time. Play this a few different ways to try and get at the four. That's the real issue, not the thought of getting on the three, but where on the three to get to the four. And he got pretty decent. He's got a little bit of an angle, but I'm not so sure he can really kind of open these up something comfortably anyways. I 
He's going into the six, Jeremy, and it's going to work. This isn't easy, but I think the value's there. If he gets it down, he's going to have position. He's got to hit it softly, though. That's a little scary. Yeah, if you don't mind rolling your ball, you can hit it with a, and come across. You can handle almost to the center of the table, so don't feel like you got to hit it baby, baby soft. Wow, very, very clean. And this all stems from the kick he's made on the one. That probably just lays up from the seven in the side. We've already had quite a few 5-4 matches. Looking at another one here shortly. If Mario can maintain here. Oh, he came out. That was surprising to me. Yeah, and he flinched a little bit as well. Yeah, kind of a little let up from the top of the downswing. And well, it has a lot to do with possibly your, your thought process there with your surprised opinion on that shot, right? He could have played to the right middle. Oh, easily just kind of soft rolled it in. He wasn't straight. He would have come off the rail with the cue ball. And I love corner pocket play. Don't get me wrong. I preach it, really. But but right there, you, you didn't have to do much. Nice recovery. He's going to have to make a nice nine ball from near the cushion. Anytime you're near the cushion, you never know. On four and a half inch pockets as well. We have not seen a nine missed yet. Let's hope that continues. Shot it with authority, and now at four games apiece. I think we're going to stay right here for this case game. Yeah, Mario, he, the player that uh, just still got to believe he's going to make that Moscone soon. Love the guy's game. I think he'd be a great team asset and player with all, all the mix of the Europeans. Uh, everyone loves Mario. Yeah, Jeremy, I, I fully agree. I've gotten to know him a lot better. He's so lighthearted, but yet so consistent. And he's still young, right? So making Team Europe, it's almost inevitable, you feel? Yeah, you would think so, though. I mean, but you never know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I feel like it will happen, but he's got to make it happen. There isn't no gifts out there. And if you just look at, like, Zelensky for this year, I mean, Got to believe if he's got a full schedule, it's going to be going to be difficult for a few of them to make the team. Or let's say there's going to be a few that feel like could have made the team that aren't. And that's just simply how it is. Well, Jason's going to have to come with a shot here. Jeremy does the five pass the eight in the lower left corner. Does he even does. attack the two? I think he's got to attack the two. This is something he does. And when he's in form, this becomes easy for him. But boy, it's a big shot for him. Yeah, if the five doesn't pass, it doesn't pass by the seven in the upper corner. And normally, yeah, Jason's definitely not not playing safe or pushing out in this situation. It's normally going to be an attacking shot, but this one is pretty tough. It is natural to go back and forth for the three, though. So I don't hate to say is all you got to do is level out. Well, you're going to level out, and all you got to do is make one heck of a shot is what you got to do. That's exactly right. Looks like he might even be putting a touch of inside on it. Might feel comfortable making the ball that way. He's overcut it. The crowd not going to be thrilled about that, and neither is he. Well, Mario, he would be all right with it. Well, that's a good Speaking point. Of he's. No pun. Just saw Mario... Last night, before he was catching an Uber from Boston, I think he snuck out and got a haircut this morning. Either that or Zelensky cut it for him. Uh, maybe. Or it was Filler he was traveling with. So, Filler, you know, multi-talented. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess Zelensky was going to ride with him, but he made it to the finals, so that didn't happen. Yeah, Josh took off on him right after that comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Said, I'll show you, buddy. Yeah, they left him high and dry. Yeah, the youngsters. Yeah, he's really concerned about the five. That's the problem here. It's not so much the four. So evidently, if the five does go, it's very tight. 
But really, what else you do, do you produce uh, on the five? I mean, the five eight, if you're having to yeah. get right on it, isn't a bad combination for sure. But the six is kind of impeding getting very close, or let's say proper on the four to get close to the five. He's going oh. forward. And that's that spin, Jeremy, on this fresh cloth, right? Yeah, but, you know, like almost like the it's shot on the six to the seven in the last rack, there was a hair of a stutter at the top of the, see it right there? Did I you saw see that little it. stutter? I did see the, it. And I, you know, I normally wouldn't call out too many of those things. It's just not something I normally see for Mario. Well, I think he wanted to get closer to the pink four. I think yeah. the five eight might be better than playing the five. Obviously depends on where you land. The eight is a big ball. They continue to look at it closely. Jason's in perfect line to come down towards it. Yeah, and again, it's early, but these matches, especially if you've taken a loss, you know, you want to rebound. Doesn't matter what you're playing. I mean, these Absolutely. guys play exhibitions where they want to rebound, and, and let alone the PLP. Well, he's fallen nicely on this eight. If it goes, and I don't know, he continues to look. So yeah. let's figure out what he's shooting here. It is a bigger ball. Don't the want to problem hit it with, with this speed. is if you're playing to a part of the pocket, easy to overcut. He's playing the combination. Yeah, it's a bigger ball, I think. Uh, well, he's caught it quick again. Really quick in the backswing once he got down. Now, the one that I'm concerned about that is... Was that like a last-second decision to shoot the combo? Because it looked like he was eyeing the five by the eight the entire time and then just kind of got down and decided, you know, oh, it's the combination instead. Well, it did. You're exactly right. It did look like he, he was eyeing the five clean the whole time and then probably recognized the combination was laying real nice. So he changed his mind in his downward motion. And maybe got just too quick with it. Um, We'll have to ask him, but I don't want to ask him now. Okay. All right, not going to flirt with coming past the side as he should not flirt with. No reason to. The eight really is a chip in, even from above the side pockets. And we could go back to the one that Mario kicked in last game that kept him alive in this game. Jason Shaw helping him out a little bit, missing the combination. Mario, he going to get his first win of the day. And much closer to the W, but still short of one here early for Jason Shaw. He's 0-2. Mario, he gets to 1-1. And, and we're going to take a small break. See you shortly. <laughs> 